going to be the price our savings. So I think that's starts with the glory of God and the other way. So it's Psalm, it starts with Psalm number 918.
celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of this kingdom. Glory to God. Song number 919.
She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maiden. She calls from the heights over, out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, Come eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord.
Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Yes, 
those are all the things that we do. They're all part of the package. But they're really like the setting for the jewel that is the center of it all. And that is the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. When people encounter Jesus, their lives were changed. And that is what is meant to happen to us. That when we encounter him here, our lives should change. We didn't just hear some nice things, some nice, beautiful sayings proclaimed. We heard Jesus, the Word of God, who was with God from the beginning, the Word who was made flesh, we heard Jesus proclaim. That was His voice that just spoke to us. And when we come to this altar, we will see only what appears to be body of uh, uh, bread and wine. But we never receive bread and wine when we come here. Because after they're brought to the altar, they're transformed by the power of the Spirit and they become the body and blood of Jesus. So he is present here. He is not someone who is just long ago, far away, a person from the history books that we can learn wonderful lessons from, that we can wonder what would he do if, we were, if he were here. No, we can listen to his voice because he is here. We can speak to him because he is here. Now there's much more to that. Because we want always to be loved. Do we not? We want intimacy in our lives. And how much more intimate can you be with someone than to let that person eat your flesh and drink your blood. Now, when Jesus said that at first, people were grossed out. People were scandalized. They thought that he was talking about some kind of cannibalism. But he has given us this form of himself that we have to believe in. We have to have the faith to know. And what he's given us himself, he's humbled himself enough to become our food, our drink, so that he can enter us and love us that intimately, be in us. What a great thing this is. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to understand this. It takes the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge that comes from the gifts of the Holy Spirit to understand how this little piece of bread and this little cup of wine can become the body and blood of God who became flesh among us. That is the wonder uh, that we celebrate here each and every Sunday that is meant to change us and transform us. But there is even more because when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, he gives us his own life. Jesus' body is in our body. Jesus' blood is in our blood. And we are one in him. We are in a common union, a communion with each other as one body. And so, Jesus didn't just do things long ago and far away. He does them now through his body, which is the church, which is fed on his body and blood. And so, Jesus taught good things. Are we not called to teach each other how to live? And it's not our teaching. It's the teaching of the living Jesus Christ that we share with others. 
so that they can live rightly, so that we can live in justice and peace in this beautiful world that God has given us. Jesus, long ago and far away, healed people. And doesn't he still heal people when we pray for them, when we reach out to them with our care and our love that are so healing? Jesus, long ago and far away, cast out demons. And don't we still do that in the name of Jesus, with the power of his spirit? When we see somebody who is affected by a demon of loneliness and depression, and we reach out to that person and touch them. Or someone who's affected by a demon of uh, uh, self-mortification uh, and we show that person that they don't have to be the center of the universe to be fully loved because we are and we're not the center of the universe we're just creatures that God loves we cast out demons when we see those who are uh, troubled in any way we go to them, we work with them, and maybe it's an instantaneous exorcism, and maybe it takes years for us to penetrate their hearts. And yet, that is not just individuals who are acting, but the body of the risen Christ, the living Christ. And so it is so important for us to come here every Sunday because here we meet the risen Jesus, the one who is very real and now and present and who teaches us the way to go, not so that we have to wonder what would Jesus do if he were here but we can now celebrate the fact that we can learn what Jesus is doing because he is here and he is acting among us through all of us who are given this power of this Holy Spirit and who are united in this intimate communion of his life.
dearly beloved gathered here, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these as adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God.
congratulate our newly confirmed.